Okay, welcome back. This is uh, lecture four. We're talking about velocity analysis and stacking. And uh, at the beginning of uh, this lecture, I stated three main objectives of this, this uh, course. One of the objectives was uh, you will be able to produce stack section and the migra migratory section, right? So stack section, that's uh, so in the in this course, in the previous three ses sessions, we talk about acquisition geometry, acquisition e equipment, uh, recording methods and pre-processing. And also last week we talk about uh, the uh, deconversion and filtering. So we have uh, prepared the data for the next step, which is imaging. So stacking is one of the uh, basic imaging uh, technology. So for the stacking, the key parameter is the velocity. So that's why we do need to introduce velocity analysis. So this tool combined as a one session today. Uh, I divided this uh, session into five parts. The first one is a CMP method. We uh, briefly mentioned that in the last week, in the last session, uh, mainly from a uh, uh, field acquisition uh, point of view. And uh, actually that acquisition is for the purposes of analysis here uh, we will discuss today. As I said, the velocity is a key parameter for the stacking, so we will uh, briefly review the velocities, uh, what type of velocities, and uh, what's the main uh, factors to uh, affect the, the velocities. For the stacking, one of our uh, technology, technology is NMO, normal move out correction. So normal move out is a concept uh, very important for the stacking and the velocity analysis. So, so actually, NMO is one of the tools for the velocity analysis. After the NMO correction, we, we end up stacking uh, a stack section. So I'll talk about the, the, de the details, uh, issues uh, in the stacking. So these are the five parts we are going to uh, discuss today. So the first one, CMP methods. Right. CMP methods, the day one, when uh, this concept was invented, actually is called a CRP method in the, uh, this publication in geophysics, year 1962. Right. And then gradually, gradually, people realize CRP is not equivalent to the CMP. But in that paper, the author claimed, you know, this uh, the fundamental CRP. Okay, no, the dif difference between R and M here, R means reflection point, which means you're talking about a subsurface structure, subsurface position. Okay, so when they promote this concept, they just uh, say, okay, I can do something add to the subsurface uh, position. In fact, it's not because there's a, one of the key assumptions here is you assume the subsurface uh, structure are horizontally layered, but unfortunately, the subsurface structure is much more complicated. Be honestly, that CM, CR, CMP actually is a more accurate uh, representation. The difference between CMP and CRP, you can you can think about it uh, in this way. You think about a CMP as a acquisition geometry related, only on the surface, nothing to do with subsurface. Only when the subsurface structure are absolutely flat, horizontal structure, those two points are corresponding to each other. Okay. That's the, the difference. Uh, but in the in the industry, 
they're often called a CDP. That D means steps even further. So common reflection, actually they're called refractive point or depths. So everybody in the industry, even in the uh, sensing data, you know, you have a trace header, also have a so-called CDP number. That CDP really means CMP. So CMP is accurate representation. CDP, everybody use that. And the CRP is the person who invented this concept. He said, OK, I have a wonderful talk. You know, I can do reflection point uh, image. So that's the difference. As a geophysicist, we should know exactly what that means. So we should distinguish uh, this concept of CDP, CMP, and the CRP. The most advanced migration method is to generate a CRP data, which is a, for each individual reflection point, you generate uh, redundancy uh, imaging uh, traces. They're called a CRP data. So we are, we are talking later. So the C, CMP is a purely uh, acquisition geometry and related to the con uh, concept, which is on the surface. Of course, CMP is a central concept. As I said, uh, in the acquisition, we use a CMP, and in the processing, we also use a CMP. So, so the purpose here, as I stated, it's a, it will pro provide uh, redundancy information for us. So this information, redundancy, will be explored for uh, velocity analysis, and then for stacking. Right. Stacking means you sum a number of traces together. So by summation, you can improve the quality of your final seismic traces, right? Uh, explicitly, that way we improve the signal to noise ratio. We'll go into this in detail. That was CMP concept. Now we're talking about CMP getters. The purpose of CMP concept was provide the redundancy of information for, for the analysis. So in acquisition, CMP data means acquisition generates uh, several midpoints, midpoint points uh, at the each shot. So uh, think about it in marine acquisition, you have a air gun source in the front, leading uh, a stream of receivers, right? So for a single shot, you actually, you generate, of course, we call the short gathers, right? So, so many receivers together. But in fact, if we're talking about CMP, you can say single shot generate a series of uh, midpoint gathers for you, okay? That's for acquisition. Uh, and the different shots, when you shift your air gun posi uh, sh sh source position to next point, and to next point, so there are some midpoints overlapped in the same place, right? So different shows have uh, information on the same midpoint, uh, midpoints point. Of course, for different shot, uh, different shots. Uh, even they are, are at the same point, uh, midpoint point, but uh, the offset, which means the source receiver distance, will be different. Uh, we will see the detail. In the field, you, you, you just do that one shot by one shot. But uh, in the processing house, you were reordering or sorting those uh, uh, traces, right? So you put uh, all traces belong to the same midpoint point into a single gather, so-called CMP gather. But again, they provide uh, redundant information on uh, reflection points, right? So that reflection point, remember, assume, we assume the subsurface uh, is an absolutely flat horizontal uh, structure. Otherwise, that's, we'll see, we'll do extra things. In the session seven, eight, when we we will talk about my version. You will talk, 
uh, we only uh, we do not only do the migration on mark stack uh, stacked uh, profile, but also do the pre-stack, which means with, without stack. So that means we own a exactly reflection point. Uh, so that's uh, the modern uh, advanced migration algorithm. That's the illustration here. So if we have you have one source point in red here, one rec receiver point in uh, black dots here. Okay, I, I need I need to emphasize here that's the receiver points, receiver position, not the physical receiver. Right in that one stream, we say receiver one, receiver two. That's the receiver number. But when we're talking about the CMP concept, we're talking about CMP receiver means receiver position. So fits in the spatial coordinate. That's a spatial position. Okay. So you have a the red dot, which is a source position, and the receiver dot. Uh, a receiver is black. Uh, receiver position is black here. So the middle point means. Uh, just uh, uh, geometrically between source and receiver. That's the midpoint. That's uh, from one shot, and from the second shot, right? Source receiver, the midpoint here. If we assume subsurface is horizontal structure, you can see that they, they actually came from the same point, right? So called mid, this is why that's called a common reflection point. Yeah, you can see. Where this, this form, this common reflection point, if this is flat. But if not flat, they have, will have a difference, right? So you can see so many shots short receive pairs. The traces from all these receive points, put them together, become CMP getters, right? So it's not CMP getter, it's not means, it do not mean you have a receiver here now. But that means all these receivers, the reflection point here, that's called CMP gate. So uh, property of, uh, properties of uh, a receiver gate, this is uh, a concept linked to acquisition. But as I said before, it's generated in the processing by, re by reordering or sorting in the processing house, okay? If the subsurface, I repeated it, because one of the objectives at the very beginning uh, of this course, I said we should realize, appreciate the limitations of seismic data processing, okay? So here, I emphasize the assumption here. If the subsurface is absolutely flat, horizontal, uh, structure, this reflections is is the same on all traces. So that means you can sum them together, enhance uh, the the signal. That provides the redundancy. That's the redundant information will be explored for us to do the velocity analysis and the stacking. Okay. Uh, one of the feature here, reflection uh, travel time. That's the, that will increase with the offset, increase with the source receiver distance. We'll see this in detail. And the one of our, our technical or our terminology here called a fold. So number of uh, traces in a CMP gather, that's called a fold. So the redundancy uh, in a CMP gather is measured by the fold. Right, just to uh, give you a very simple uh, illustration here. There's a, a shot here, receive here, this, this bottom move forward. You can see subsurface reflection point, they move, right? Source receiver distance, which source receiver offsets are constant. If a source receiver constant, so the subsurface reflection point actually varies, right? Follow this line. Okay. So now let's see for this, such a simple 2D acquisition geometry, 
how the CMP and the CMP gather looks like. That's a, a simplest uh, acquisition. You have one shot here and uh, four receivers. Okay, that's those four dots at the moment represents four physical physical uh, exist the receivers, right? But uh, when you do the CMP analysis, you should recognize you try to get something. It's not the receiver physical receiver number, but the receiver position. Okay. For example, now you have a one shot for receivers. The distance I use different color bar near offset. It's a slightly dark red and uh, gradually light. So you have one shot. That means this one shot, the midpoint source receiver midpoint is here. Source receiver, second receiver, the midpoint is here. The third receiver, the pair of a uh, uh, source receiver uh, have a pair has a uh, midpoint here, and then the fourth the fourth one here. So, right now, this one move to next point. You have a nearest two, three, and a four. Right. So at this point, now we have a two chases. One's from here, one's from previous one, right? So you have two choices. So at the moment, the fourth number is two. But this one, you just have a single one. So you have one. And they move further, three, further, four. So you maximally, for that, for that geometry, you only have four, number four. A four equal to four, so maximum. So single shot. And the four receivers, the maximum, uh, uh, the maximum uh, fourth number is four. Okay. This four, this geometry. The details we will see here. Source here, receiver, receiver here. So the last shot, 10, you have uh, one receiver, two, three, four. The, di the distance between the short interval, you can see from here to here, there's a short interval. Same as the receiver interval. This sort of a, a details where affects how many numbers, how many choices in one fold. Let's see further detail here. <laughs> so the fold of uh, coverage is controlled by the acquisition geometry. In the field, if we, you do not, so the, although the processing is done in the proce processing house, but uh, the fold is determined by the field acquisition. You cannot increase or reduce that by processing, right? Uh, I will show you a stacking diagram. So how to get the number of fold in the next slides. For the marine acquisition, geometries are always, almost always, uh, and end which means you source is in the end of a uh, acquisition line, right, leading on. So end on. And the receivers most likely have a regular uh, interval, so uniform geometry. Such a uniform geometry will simplify analysis in terms of a CMP uh, analysis. However, for land acquisition, the geometries are uh, much more complicated, right? Because of uh, uh, obstacles and uh, surface I I irregularity. And uh, because of this uh, uh, complication, the geometries are highly available. That's the land acquisition. This is a stacking diagram. One of the stacking diagrams. Stacking diagram we have two types. One's uh, uh, here, surface stacking diagram. So we analysis this everything on the surface because as I said, CMP concept is related to the 
that quotation geometry on the surface. So this surface is a second diagram. The subsurface diagram is second. So subsurface diagram is slightly uh, complicated, but the, uh, if we understand this concept, uh, you are easy to, to analyze it. But both do the same thing. That's why people invent for, uh, also invented the subsurface diagram. Basically, they try to link this concept to the subsurface reflection point. Again, that's only uh, assumption here, only uh, for the flat horizontal flat layers. Okay, in this stacking diagram, let's see this. We're talking about uh, 2D line, although this looks like a 3D, but it's 2D line. That's the access of a receiver. So you have a receiver one, two, three in this sequence, right? And the vertical access is a position of source. But in the in the previous uh, cartoon I showed, actually you have a one line here and the next one here, next one here, next one here, right? That's the field acquisition. But in the diagram, we just put the vertical access here as a source point, right? So you have a for example, the first source point is zero, and then here, next source from here, next source from here. So that's a, this vertically means a source uh, distance. It's not necessarily in that direction, but uh, measures still in the two D direct uh, in the in the one line. But uh, just put there. Okay. Now, for this stack now, we can see this one horizontal line here, not here by one. That's the one common show together. All these traces, recorded uh, traces all, from all these receiver points, um, are made up a uh, single common show together. So this is one show together, second one, third one, there's different show togethers. That's the one. Vertically, this is called a common receiver together. Again, the receiver here means receiver position. That's the difference. So you can see precisely called a common receiver position getter, right? We won't say that, but we just say common receiver getter, right? So this one, source receiver, same point. Next one, source here, receiver here. Receiver access, they're actually at the same position. In the, this stream, the first receiver at this position, in this stream, second receiver, this stream, third receiver, okay, that's physical receiver, but the uh, receiver position, they are at the same place, right? So the traces recorded at this point, this point, this, this, they, they are uh, put together like a receiver getter called a C, um, uh, C common receiver getter. Another one called a CMP section, common midpoint section, which is a three here. This is slightly uh, difficult to understand. Let's see why this one called a CMP together. This one source here, receiver here. So the midpoint is here, right? Because source receiver at the same point, source receiver distance zero. When the source is at the same point, the midpoint is, of course, at the same position, right? So this way. So for next line here, next uh, shot here, source here, receive here, midpoint here, right? So midpoint is the position. So the next one, source here, receive here, the midpoint here, right? Source receive a mid midpoint. Next one, midpoint here. Right? So those are the midpoint position from the each individual line, right? The system trace from uh, your receivers, actually, for the first one, you get this one, this one, third one, fifth, uh, fifth one, seventh one, nine, eleventh. Traces from this receivers give you a common midpoint section. Right. So, so we need to distinguish 
the receiver position and the, the physical receiver. So easier for you, you can see if we say, okay, the receiver means receiver position, if you say so, but you can say receiver, the physical receiver in, uh, equipment, you, just, you, you can simply call geophone or hydrophone, right? In this case, if we're talking about ring acquisition, you say, right, this is the receiver position, this is, this is the common receiver section, common receiver data is came from those geophones or those hydrophones. That's probably easy for you to uh, distinguish in the receiver position and the, the receiver. The really receiver means either hydrophone or geophone. That's the number three. Number four, it's a common receptor section, or actually it's a constant of that section, which is this line. Constant offset means you from here to here, source receiver position, a source receiver distance, source receiver distance, source receiver distance, they are all in a constant, right? From here to here. So this, this that means you came from same geophone position. Right? Source and a leader, uh, a stream of uh, uh, geophones, or source leader and uh, a stream of uh, hydrophones, right? From the same hydrophone, from the same hydrophone, all the traces from the same hydrophone make a uh, constant offset section. What we try to do, stack. Stack really means equivalent to a zero of the section, which is far here. Source at this point, receiver also at this point. It's called source receiver distance zero. Right. But physically, you cannot put a, your hydrophone next to the air gun. Right? So this zero of the section is generated by processing. What you wanted to do is, if ideally in the field, you can acquire this section, that'd be ideal situation, right? But in fact, you cannot. So the zero offset section is generated by processing. The processing tool is here, CMP stack, right? Or CMP stack. So CMP stack section is zero offset. So whole session today is talking about how to convert this different type of uh, gathers. Basically, you can sort it into the middle, common middle uh, point gathers, how to convert the common middle point gathers into a stack section, which means equivalently to a, in the field, you acquire a seismic section with a zero offset, your source and the receiver always at the same point, but have, of course, social you said move together, always at the same point, right? So that's the uh, surface stack diagram. I do not spend much time for the subsurface. We'll see uh, by next slides, see the difference. Let's start for the marine acquisition. Again, this is the surface diagram, a surface uh, stacking diagram, just same as uh, the one before. Now, in this, uh, this is so-called dot here, represents a uh, short uh, air gun. And uh, the square he squares here are the receivers, I mean the hydrophones, right? So source receiver, source receiver. So now this one green line here, that's a common short together, same as previous diagram. The second one, so basically, this direction, just another common shot together, another common shot together. So in your field, you acquire your data actually in this format, common shot together, right? trace by trace, and then next shot, trace by trace. So that's the common shot together. Once you get this data, uh, for, and uh, you do the processing in the processing house, what do you do now? You try to finally generate so-called CMP gathers, right? So let's see the diagram. 
where's the CMP? Source receiver here, the midpoint is, is here, right? So next one, source, the midpoint, we still try to find a midpoint here. I, I, I didn't uh, draw anything here. That was all the confusion here. So midpoint here, midpoint here, midpoint here. So you actually draw, for, uh, actually hydro phone should be this one, this one, this one. The traces from this four hydrophones make a C and P gather. Of course, this is called a common receiver gather, which really means common receiver position. That's called a common channel. Common channel means the same physical uh, receiver equipment, same hydrophone. Source hydrophone, same one, right? Uh, in this case, I just uh, talk about source receiver distance 25 meter, just for example, okay? The one geometry uh, parameter here is source interval, source, this source to next source, the source interval from here to here equal to the group interval. Group interval. Do you know why we call group? Because in the field, the single sashimi trace is not recorded by a single hydrophone. It's recorded by a group of hydrophones. We try to use this combination to cancel horizontal components to try to suppress the, the noise. Each trace is recorded by an, a group of hydrophones, okay? That's called a group interval. So that's the geometry. So, so surface in the subsurface, subsurface means you think about this on one of the reflections, right? In the sub subsurface, and that you assume the reflection is horizontal, parallel to the surface. The source receiver in this direction, that's called a common shot together, no problem. The common midpoint, because you assume the subsurface reflection is ex extremely. Absolutely, sorry, absolutely flat. So the midpoint corresponding to the subsurface refraction point, CRP, right? So that's the CRP. So when they promote this concept, they actually convince you to use this diagram because you say in the field, I do the uh, uh, acquisition generate uh, uh, redundant information. This in redundant information from the same midpoint. If we sum this four receiver, uh, so four traces together, we can improve the signal to noise ratio, uh, signal to noise ratio, or based on this four traces, the arrival time different because the source receiver distance different, right? This one source with the same position, here source receiver different position. Different position means you travel distance different. And that means travel time difference. Based on the, the travel time curvature, you can find the information you need, which is a velocity, right? So this this subsurface uh, stacking diagram just uh, give you, I uh, just try to convince you the concept of a CMP uh, is really useful for the seismic analysis. That's common channel, and this called this is a common receiver or common uh, hydrophone, right? So it's different from the surface. That was source uh, short interval equal to the uh, group interval. Now, if source inter short interval is half of the group interval, in this case. Compare the previous one, you can see the difference here. So in between these two shots, I insert another shot. The two shots, I insert another shot, right? So the short interval now is half the group interval. Short interval is half of the receiver interval. Now you can see the CMP gather here. Source receiver, source receiver, middle point. Is, is here, so the, the hydrophone from this hydrophones, 
the traces from this hydrophones make a CMP data, right? Now, how many number traces? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In the previous diagram, we have four. So, if the short interval reduced by a half, your number of uh, traces in a CMP we call a fault, right? Fault. If we already the fault doubled. That's the well uh, important thing. And then again, everything here doubled. You can see here, everything doubled. You can compare this to a diagram. So this is the simple uh, conclusion. Just best, not a mathematical. Well, you don't need any mathematical uh, uh, proof. Just uh, based on the uh, observation. If you saw short interval equal to half of group interval, number of uh, ch channels in a CMP together, so called fault, is equal to number of channels, which means uh, number of tra uh, traces in one stream. Okay. If a short is the same, short interval is the same as group interval, faults is half of the uh, number of uh, channels. If a short interval is, is twice as the group interval, the photo will be a quarter of a number of channels, right? That's straightforward. So if you, you know, I, I said at the very beginning, you do some mathematical formulas, you don't need to really memorize that, but the best on uh, your uh, simple analysis, uh, based on what basically physics, so uh, you know how to acquire it in the field, what the geometry uh, was, so you can come out the number. If you if you really like mathematics, you can remember the formula, but it's just useless, right? As I said, so many formulas are present, I presented here. You don't need to memorize it. You can always derive by yourself. Okay. Number of channels. Number of uh, fault, number of this, uh, number of traces in your CMP together is equal to receiver interval, source interval, the ratio divided by two. Right. Okay. That's for the uh, CMP concepts. As I said, CMP concept uh, generate CMP getters, which are uh, provide uh, redundant information for us. We need We use this information to do the velocity an analysis. Before we start with velocity analysis, uh, let's uh, review what are the velocities. Okay, what are such velocity? What, what's the uh, fact in, uh, inference the velocities? Such velocity is a uh, uh, intrinsic property, right, of a uh, of, uh, subsurface uh, uh, media. It's nothing to do with uh, the, the actual force, right? So the velocity is different from the speed. Speed means follow, follows the Newton, Newton second row, uh, second, right? Speed depends on the, the force, but the velocity is not. Velocity is uh, the intrinsic property of uh, uh, any material. That's the difference here, okay? Uh, the velocity is controlled by local physics. Explicitly, it's controlled by elastic properties, which means shear modular, uh, uh, bulk modular, density, so on so forth, right? or Young's modular. And uh, when we're talking about the velocity, the macro velocity actually is related to the rock matrix. When we're talking about rock matrix, it means the structure of a rock, but uh, ignore the poles within the rock. Okay? So this velocity is mainly controlled by, mainly right, controlled by the rate. Local matrix, skeleton of a rock, right? 
but also influenced by the, the poles in, in terms of shapes, in terms of the fluid inside the pole, right? either water or gas or oil. Actually, velocity in theory can be used to discover the, uh, or determine the different, different fluid, but that's only in theory, right? Because sensitivity uh, against the, the errors, that's, that's not realistic. But at least the pole pressure, pole shape, and uh, the fluid situation actually affects the velocity. Okay? But mainly, typically for seismic stacking analysis, in this uh, macro scale, mainly depends on about local local metrics. Uh, also, defined uh, influenced by confining pressure. What uh, is confining pressure? You might know that, right? Confining pressure. If we think about the pore pressure, you understand the confining pressure. Basically, the pore pressure is the if we have a fluid inside the pole the pressure on the fluid, that's called pole pressure. The pressure on the local matrix is called confined pressure, right? It's different. And of course, also influenced by temperature. Same material, but under different temperature, the material becomes a high temperature, usually, not necessarily true, but usually, uh, the material becomes a uh, soft. And the softer material usually leads to a lower velocity. Okay, that's the logic here. That's talking about the localized velocity. However, in the seismic uh, science here, seismic technology here, the velocity also complicated by the averaging effect because we have source on the surface, receive on the surface. The velocity for the target layer is not only uh, reflects the velocity at this layer, but uh, the velocity influenced by the whole ray pass. Okay, so that actually complicated by every factor during the propagation for the ray pass. Right? Uh, for velocities, there are many different types. How to dis distinguish? how to uh, classify uh, different types really depends on the context. We will see one by one. That's the velocity. For velocity analysis, at the, or velocity uh, and, uh, in the local physical concept, uh, there are a number of uh, considerations. First of all, velocity depends on the elastic properties. So this uh, basically is uh, average over sizing of wavelengths, right? So the elastic, velocity, uh, elastic uh, properties, you can have a different scale, macro scale, macro scale, or, or in, the, I mean, in the middle. But uh, for seismic uh, analysis related, you should consider it's uh, average over sizing of wavelengths, so it's less function determined by the seismic wavelengths. Wavelengths is a one over frequency, right? So see, uh, the velocity divided by frequency called the wavelengths. So really related to the velocity, uh, really related to the frequency. As I said, it also depends on the frequency, okay? the same thing set. And the velocity also depends on uh, uh, the stiffness of uh, the rock. Stiffness means uh, how hard the rock is. Okay. Uh, commonly, usually the harder rocks have a high velocity compared to uh, the soft rocks. Soft rocks velocity is uh, usually a lower if the or other parameters are in relative the same. Domain. Same, same, same territory. Uh, deep rocks usually have a higher velocity. OK. 
Okay. Why? Because of compaction, because of overburden pressure. Right? Deep layer, you have a overburden, uh, overburden uh, pressure, uh, pressure, so make it make the rocks more, uh, more uh, stiffer. That's the, the general consideration. And the for seismic uh, analysis, the velocity actually we consider different for different wave types. Uh, in the first session, we reviewed that there are a number of uh, important uh, wave mode, wave, wave types. We have a P wave, soft uh, S wave, which means shear wave. That's those two waves are body wave. But also we're talking about uh, surface waves, uh, radius wave, and uh, long wave. They also uh, depends on the different particle uh, movement direction. So the velocity is somehow related to the, to the movement direction. So that's also related. So velocity, basically, you need to consider uh, different wave types, different mode. In general, we're talking about a P wave. Uh, in the general case, this is a table here. We can have a rough idea what the velocity looks like. Okay, for the air. So the when I speak here, you you uh, you received my voice. Actually, there is time delay caused by velocity, caused by distance. The velocity is in the air is 330 meter per second. So they have time delay. In the water. It's a very good assumption is 1500, right? But uh, some like ice water velocity slightly uh, lower, that's a 1400. But most likely just water, water, it will be like 1480 and uh, 1500. So that's quite reasonable. So velocity is not a really constant in the water, depends on the temperature. As I said, okay. For petroleum, velocity is between 1300 to 1400. So for oil, the velocity is slightly smaller than water velocity. That's the one of our key parameter, one of the key parameters for us to di distinguish between. Uh, oil and the water, right? So when you do that, use a seismic technology as a tool for geophysical uh, interpretation for the reservoir characterization. So if we can find the velocity difference, you will be able to distinguish the water reservoir from a petroleum reservoir. All right. You can see here, we have blank here. That, that means velocity zero. Because air, water, petroleum, are, in general, we call fluid, right? Air is, of course, air is not fluid, but it's a, in general, that's in this three type of media, the shear modular is zero. So there's no S wave velocity. That's important concept, right? Uh, for harder uh, materials like steel, material harder, you have a high velocity. For the concrete, concrete compared to the steel, it's not as hard as the steel, right? So velocity different, lower. So the velocity depends on hardness. In the local physics, uh, the hardness uh, is represented by stiffness matrix, right? Uh, for different rocks, that's uh, uh, granite. Granite is uh, uh, 500, uh, 50, 5500 and 5900. But that's the P wave velocities. But for sand, for sand, velocity very low. Okay. That's pure sand, right? But for uh, sandstone, 
velocity could be high because it depends on the pressure, depends on the, uh, the sentimental uh, layer. So the variation is very big. However, this one, sand, sandstone usually have a velocity smaller than the surrounding uh, layer. So that's the very important velocity, is a very important uh, parameter for us to detect a sand channel for the form sentimental uh, layer. So that's very useful uh, technology, okay? Uh, all different types of velocities, that's for P. Because they are solid materials, they also have shear velocity, S-wave velocity. S-wave velocity usually, uh, well, not a usual, I mean, most 100% smaller than shear velocity, that's true. They usually like a, a 1.7 smaller than that. So, so one over square root of three, that's like, or square root of three over three, that's a common uh, exception. Exception used in, a, if you do not have S velocity, okay, you can work out. That's the typical velocities. Now, we're talking about type of velocities. One of the velocities called the phase velocity. Phase, when we uh, review, the Fourier trans review the Fourier transform concept, Fourier theory, we're talking about the phase. Phase is time delay, right? But in the frequent domain, phase really is the time delay for individual frequency. So the phase velocity basically velocity for individual frequency. That's as simple as that, called phase velocity. And the, in the previous table, we're talking about P-wave velocity. P-wave velocity A is a group of velocity. Means you sum up all the frequencies uh, together. You have a so-called equivalent velocity, right? So called group of velocity. Okay. Physically, they are different, uh, but if you recall, when you are talking about wave propagation, you have wave front. The phase velocity is a vector. The wave front, uh, the wave direction is perpendicular to the wave front. That's absolutely perpendicular to the wave front. However, for the group of velocity, that's not necessarily true. Your perpendicular direction is not perpendicular. Sorry, the propagation direction is not perpendicular to the wave front. So the group, the propagation direction in, in the general case really means that the dominant energy propagation along the direction. But the dominant energy is not same as the wave propagation direction, but it's just different. And uh, because the subsurface material are uh, different, you have a so-called iso isotropic velocity, which means the velocity travel in any direction within this material, any direction they are same. But unlikely for the general case, general case is anisotropy. So velocity varies with the direction. So that's why I said that here for phase velocity, important thing is your velocity direction, the wave propagation direction varies with the uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, direction. So that's a general isotropy, anisotropy. And the modern days for your sizing the data processing, typically for stack and migration, you need to consider this an associated parameter. Otherwise, uh, you always see, oh, well, what I try here, I try there, but why the final result is not what we expect. So that's very really getting much important. But from very beginning of uh, this industry or any concept that you at an early stage, we assume this is isotropic and gradually, gradually realize this, this, this tool uh, idea is uh, too far away from a realistic, so realistically anisotropic, right? So to concept, uh, to consider anisotropy, I'll give you one example. If you have a, a book, you have like a 200 pages of book, 
But if like you have a very sharp knife, right? If you hit from the surf from top down, you will hardly get your knife through your, your book, right? But if you horizontally you hit your uh, the knife uh, hit your book, it can easily go through. You see that? So the layered structure is a one of a key, one of a very uh, important and a such a type of uh, velocity, right? Okay, because layer structure gives you a uh, have a strong inference to everything. You know, when you have force, you have a different response. So that's an assertion. 